Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rocketry. In our previous video, we showed the complete process on how to build our newest PVC case rocket motor. One of our viewers made a good comment. He asked, how do you retain this in the rocket since it really is an unusual shape and doesn't have much to grab onto like traditional motors. So in this video, we're gonna show you briefly how we center, stop, and retain this motor. So the first thing is the centering system, basically the area where you're going to slide the motor into the rocket body. Now for that we use these centering rings. Now these also have some protrusions on them, that's how we uh, install the fins. We're not going to cover that portion, but basically just looking at this we've got a ring that slides nicely into our body tube and then the center diameter here fits our caps on the motor very well. Now. We like to have the motor just sticking out of the bottom of the rocket just a little tiny bit. That gives the opportunity for this ring to slide just a little bit up onto the flat surface of this lower cap. And then on the top, you have a varying amount of space where you could put this. It could be down towards the bottom of that cap or up towards the top of that cap. It really doesn't matter. I usually like to split the difference and just go somewhere in between. So if we know that this bottom ring is going to be all the way at the bottom of the body tube, that's going to stiffen up the bottom of the body tube and hold it nice and firm as well, then we can measure up from there to this and that will tell us exactly where we need to put this upper ring. Now the second part is the motor stop. Now this is just a piece of quarter inch MDF. Again, it fits nicely into the body tube. This is the piece that the motor pushes up against so that the motor doesn't shoot up through the rocket body. Now this gets glued in at the position at the top of the motor. So again, we know where this needs to be since this bottom ring is at the bottom of the body tube. We can simply measure up to this point and that tells us exactly where the motor stop needs to be. Now you notice in this particular motor stop ring we also have two small holes. That's because in some of our rockets we use this to mount the parachute recovery cord or the shock cord. Now if you're going to do that you need to install the shock cord onto this first before you install it because it's going to be so far down inside the rocket body that you won't be able to get to it later on to tie that cord on. So install the cord first and then install this into the rocket. Now, if you're going to use this for parachute mounting, there's a lot of stress on this. And if this is just simply glued into the body tube and the parachute deploys, it could potentially rip this out of place because there's just not that much surface area where this is glued in. So when we do that, we also include one of these little rings. Now, this is just a small piece of the body tube where I've removed about a half inch piece here that allows it to squish down and fit inside the body tube as a sleeve. So the process for this would be we glue this in place and then we would glue the ring directly on top of that so that the ring is facing up. So when the parachute deploys it's pulling not only on this uh, piece of MDF but also it would have to rip out this entire sleeve in order to get that to move. So now that we've got the two rings installed and further in we have the stop installed, you see the motor fits nicely just like that. But the problem is retaining. When the parachute deploys, this is just going to come flying out. So for retaining, we're going to use these three little pieces here. The first part is a T-nut. It has this little threaded neck in the center, large flat surface, and three little spikes that help hold it in place. That gets installed into the lower centering ring that goes on the bottom of the rocket body. So the flat surface here is on the inside of the rocket, and this is what you see on the bottom of the rocket. Now the neck of this sometimes is a little extra long. I like it to be flush here, so I did sand down on the belt sander this neck just a little bit short, just took a couple of millimeters off so that it would end up to be flush on the surface of the ring here. 
Now for this particular ring, it has a nice wide body because we're using a four inch diameter rocket. So I just center this on the center of this ring. Next, we just have a small screw. Now this is a number 10 screw. If you're in metric, five millimeter would be the closest equivalent. This one is three quarters of an inch long. And the last part we have is a fender washer. Now a fender washer is a thin washer that has a very large outside diameter compared to the inside hole. So this inside hole fits our screw very well. And this one happens to be an inch and a quarter outside diameter. So with the motor installed, we just simply thread the screw with the washer into that T-nut. And you see as we tighten that down, it just pushes against the bottom of the motor and that's held in there very nicely. Now this washer is a little bit large here where it's pushing against the edge of the body tube. You could take that on a belt sander or a grinder and just take off a little bit of that washer just so it pushes against the wood instead of pushing against the cardboard. But that's it. That motor is centered, stopped, and retained. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this uh, helpful if you're trying to mount this type of a motor. If you do end up building or flying one of our motors, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a comment down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.